Welcome. In the last video, we showed that in our lab frame, the Lorentz force could be calculated by first finding the electric field and the magnetic field in the lab frame, and then using the Lorentz force for this. We showed for a A frame that we're not showing, right? If A was the frame that we're looking at, where A is in rest in that frame, that our forces agreed. Now let's take a look at the B frame. So the B frame, we're saying that our charge that we care about in B is not moving, but A is in this frame. So we have to use our relativistic transforms for here. So the electric field in the B frame is going to be the electric field in the lab frame plus the velocity of B relative to the lab frame crossed with the magnetic field of the lab frame. So let's find this first. We have our electric field from lab frame is dB over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared plus j hat. Then we have VBL is V negative i hat, and then we cross it with V sub L, which is 1 over c squared dB v over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared negative k hat. Excellent. So we can factor out the QB, the 4 pi epsilon naught d squared. And so we get that our electric field in the B is going to be QB 4 pi epsilon naught d squared. This leaves us with j hat here. Now, negative i hat crossed with negative k hat is the same as i hat crossed with negative k hat, which is negative j hat. So we have v, v over c squared, and we have negative j hat, so we can write this as a negative v squared over c squared j hat, or we can write this as then qb over 4 pi epsilon naught squared, 1 minus v squared over c squared j hat. Awesome. Our magnetic field is going to be quite a bit easier our magnetic field in frame B. Since we use this electric field transform, this is just equal to the magnetic field in the original frame. So this is then 1 over C squared dBV over 4 pi epsilon naught squared times negative K hat. So at last we have our force in the reference frame B is equal to our charge through A. And then we have our electric field in this frame, QB over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared, 1 minus V squared over C squared, J hat. And then plus the velocity of our recipient in this frame, which is twice, so 2v in the positive i hat, crossed with our magnetic field, so we'll just bring this c squared over from this magnetic field, qb v over 4 pi epsilon naught squared negative k hat. Awesome. So we found just up here that negative i hat cross with negative k hat gives us negative j hat. So positive i hat cross with negative k hat will give us positive j hat. So then our force in reference frame B, we can bring this QA over and we can bring QB over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared out. So QB QA over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared. One minus v squared over c squared, but then qb 4 pi epsilon naught d squared, right, pull all that out, qa, we now have 2v squared over c squared, and all of this is in the j hat direction. So 1 minus v squared over c squared plus 2v squared over c squared is equal to just 1 plus v squared over c squared, j hat. We'll have the QA be first, just so it looks nice, over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared, 
and this is our force in frame B. Lovely enough, our force in frame B, QAQB over 4 pi epsilon B squared, 1 plus B squared is C squared, J hat, is exactly the same as the force in the lab frame, was exactly the same as the force in frame A. It only works if we only do one of these two transforms, and this shows us that this is not the real form, right? The real form to do these field transforms requires special relativity, which we'll learn in later classes.